Hello to everyone guys. So today I will show you how to create a custom module in Odoo 17. So before this, yes, I have already shown you very complex um, topics. Uh, so as compared to those topics, this topic is very simple, but um, uh, lots of our subscribers and friends have just requested me to just um, to record this video in which I will explain how to create a custom module by using scaffold uh, command in Windows. So for this purpose, if you can see, um, I'm using Windows and I'm using Odoo 17. If you can see, if I just go in settings. So this is Odoo 17, as you can see here. Odoo 17 Community Edition. And along with this, this is Visual Studio. So in Visual Studio Code, this is my custom folder. This is my um, Odoo's add-ons in this folder. And at the moment in server, I have got my Odoo dash bin. And let me just show you, if I just go in my PC in C, this is Odoo 17 and here, in server, I have got Odoo bin and in Python, I have got Python installed. So let's dive into the creation of a custom module in Odoo 17. One of the easiest ways to start a new module is by using the scaffold command, which sets up a basic structure for us. I will show you how to use this command right here in our terminal. So what we need to do, let's start, let's stop Odoo service and we need to write command here. Okay, so before I just write the command, I just need to tell you a couple of very simple things about this command. So first argument will be the path of your Python exe file. As I already have told you, this is in, um, this is in C and then Odoo 17. In Odoo 17, I have got Python, and in Python, I have got Python exe file. So this is the first argument. Now, um, the second argument will be the Odoo bin path. So at the moment, the Odoo bin path is this here. Let's copy here and copy path and paste it here. So C. Odoo 17 server Odoo dash bin. Perfect. And then the name of our module. This is the third argument. So the name of our module, let's suppose we call it new module. New underscore module. And then the fourth argument will be uh, the fourth argument will be, guys, um, is your module name, which I have already given. Sorry. Here I have done mistake. The third argument will be scaffold command fourth argument will be the name of the module and the last argument and fifth argument will be the place where we want our module to be installed so let's let's say uh, we are installing in odoo 17 then server and then custom this is the name of our um, custom folder which is here so copy path if you so let's just remove it here and just pay, paste the exact thing which is this let me just rectify this sorry i'm just a bit used to uh, linux so this is fine now. So that's it. Again, let me just repeat. So the first argument will be the Python, Python exe path, which is this one. Then the second argument will be Odoo dash bin path, which is exactly here. And then the third argument will be scaffold command. Fourth argument will be new module, the name of our module, whatever you want, you can just give any name here. And the last, where you want to install your module. So let's enter. That's it, boom. 
voila so if you just go and check in custom module you can see new module is there and all the directory uh, structure is already there so scaffold the module um, odoo provides a command line tool to help set up the new module uh, which we have already done we have just given five arguments and our module has been created uh, this command tells odoo to create a new module named new module which we have created and automatically generates a set of standard files for a module so in module if we just jump into this module structure we have got controllers okay so the controllers directory is where we define python classes that handle web requests it's crucial for any module that interacts with users through a web interface so this is enough for now then the next directory is demo this is for whenever we are just creating some demo files for our modules we need to work in this directory then the third one is very important one in the models directory we define our data models these python classes represent the business objects of our application and include both the data and the business logic the next one is security security is vital this directory contains csv files that define access control lists and record rules determining who can access what in our module and then not less the least the views so the views define how the models are presented to the users in the user interface these are xml files that describe the layout and elements of the user interface such as forms lists menus actions etc etc so this is our module and very important in this module structure which is called uh, the manifest file the file contains metadata about your module like its name description dependencies and more it's essential for odoo to understand how to handle your module so here we can just write the name new module at the moment is there the author description website category version we can just define a uh, version here and here the dependencies where we just need to give dependencies if we are inheriting any module we need to give that module name here as a dependency and when we are adding files here in uh, views or in data or so we just need to give that path here in data and then in demo if we are adding any files in demo folder then we are just giving that in here so this is the structure of module one more thing let me just copy from my other modules so this one is also important which is called application true so this will give our manifest file that if we, we want to install it as an application or not so let's add it in our manifest file that's it so uh, that's it this is um, I have just shown you in this in this um, video that how to create a new module in Odoo 17 by using scaffold command there was lots of confusion uh, how to do this uh, very clearly I've just shown you that how you can do this so let's run the service now sorry this is not five so let's go and run it okay L I have run it and here Odoo is running so let's restart it and now click update apps list so what will happen that this will update the apps list if there is a new modules have been added in in, in visual studio and backend so it will just fetch those modules in the apps list so now we need to search new module that's what our module is called so if you i just search it if you can see new module is there and if i click activate it will just install that module so at the moment we have not added any work it's just a very simple very raw new module structure so you can install it if you if you want you can just do any work and then you can install it so yeah this is it guys 
I hope you like the video. If you like it, please like it, share it, subscribe it, share it with your friends. And I will just present another topic in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.